In this tutorial, we're going to be covering color, swatches, and gradient. These three tools can be found on the right side of the artboard in the panel. So let's start out with color. When you open it up, you'll see that there isn't much going on right now. If we take a look at it. You can see it's black, fades to gray, this white box with a red line through it. Then you have two smaller boxes right here. It's very important to pay attention to these boxes. The first one represents the stroke. We learned a little bit about this in an earlier tutorial. A stroke is any outline of an object on the artboard. So it can be a shape, it can be text, it can be an image. If you look very closely, you can tell that this box represents the stroke because there is a box with a smaller box on the inside, and so it looks like the outline. The shortcut to toggle between the stroke and the fill is X. So if we hit X, this next box will pop up. This box represents the fill. So if the stroke is the outline of an object, the fill is what's inside. So you're going to fill an object with color. So using color, you can actually choose whichever color you want specifically for a certain object. So to demonstrate this, we're going to go over on the left side to the rectangle tool. And we're going to drag out a rectangle. Right now, there's no fill and the stroke is black. If you look at the artboard, there is the blue bounding box around it. Remember that's because we're on the blue layer. So if we go to screen mode, or excuse me, preview mode, which is shift W, you can see that our print view, the rectangle is black. We'll get out of this by hitting escape. Now, if we switch over to fill by clicking or using the X key on the keyboard, we can now add color to it. So let's add a little color. Well, the reason it didn't work is because we didn't actually select the object first. So now we're going to go back to the selection tool, which is the, the V key, then select it. Once we do that, you'll notice the fill is actually none because when we added fill, nothing was selected. So now we're going to choose a color, and when we do that, you'll see that the fill now is in the the fill is now the center of the object with the color that we put in. So if we go to preview mode, shift W, you can see we have a small black outline around a light blue rectangle. If we go back to stroke, make sure we have the object selected. We can add weight to it and you can see by clicking off that the outline is now thicker and so we have a blue rectangle with a nice thick black outline. Highlight it again, make sure it's selected, go back down to one, and we'll go back to color. So let's say you, you create a color using the CMYK cell, scale and you really like it. What you're going to do now is go over to this menu, select it, a new window pops up. Go down to click and click add to swatches. Once you do this, the color will be added to your swatches. Now let's click on swatches. What swatches are, are they're pre-made colors that are already there for you to use. So we have none, registration paper, black, you have a light blue, a pink, yellow, red, green, blue, and at the very bottom is the swatch that we actually just made. The nice thing about swatches is that whenever you're working within a specific document and you create a swatch, you can save it and keep reopening it whenever you're in this document. So let's say you're working on this project, you're creating a poster, you make this color that you really like and you want to keep using it. Well, if you save it to your swatches, you're able to keep you're able to continue to use it as long as you're staying in this document. The downside is that whenever you create a new document, a new project, your swatches will revert back to the original ones from the light blue all the way down to the dark blue. The good news is if you look, you have a CMYK scale at the bottom that shows you the exact number for how to create the color. And so you can go back and create your color in your new in your new document. You can also create a new swatch by coming to this menu, clicking on it, and click new color swatch. You'll see the CMYK, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This slider scale pops up. You can actually create and choose the different colors in here to create a new swatch. Once you're done with it, you're going to click add. And then it'll add to the bottom of the swatches panel and you click done. Because our object was selected, when you clicked add, 
that object now became that color. If you want to change it back, make sure the object is selected, and then click on the color you want it to be. That brings us to gradient. You can start gradient by clicking right here. But how I like to use gradient is I like to open up the panels, and I actually like to use swatches with the gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the swatches, hold it down with the mouse, and move it up to the next panel. Once I do that, you're actually you're able to use swatches and gradient together. What a gradient is, it's when one color fades into another color. So right now it's just black and white. So it's white fading into black with gray in the middle. What you can do is using the swatches, you can take a color, so I'm going to take my wife's favorite color, select it, then I'm going to click with it with the mouse, and then drag. You can see there's a plus sign next to my cursor, which is now a fist. When I release the mouse, that color will be added to it. Now you have a little bit of white, blue, and black. They all merge into each other. If I wanted to add a different color, so I can do yellow, do the same thing. Click yellow, click and hold it, and then I'm going to drag it down and add it. Now because I didn't add it to the very end. I now have two different colors in there, but that's okay. If you wanted to, you can just click and drag off and it'll erase the two different colors. So now we're back to black and blue. The slider in the middle represents where the blend begins. So if I take the slider in the middle and move it to the left, you can see there's going to be more black. If I take the slider and move it to the right, you can see there's going to be more blue. You can also reverse it. If you wanted to have one color on one side and the other color on the other side. The type, linear, it's going to be straight, a line. Radial, it's going to be a circle. Now let's add more colors to it. If we wanted to, you can click and, click and drag. And you can just continue to add different colors to create a rainbow. Now what I want you guys to do is go over on the left side and look for the gradient swatch tool. This tool only works with the gradient, so it'll be nice to work here. So we're going to select it. With this, you can click and drag in any direction, and your gradient swatch is actually going to match which direction you go. So if you go left to right in a diagonal, your swatch is now left to right diagonally. If you make it very small, it's going to be one color. If you make it really long, all the colors are in it. This has been a tutorial covering color, swatches, and gradient.